with the presentation of developing a GIS-based road maintenance management system. She comes from Kenya and let's start. Uh, okay, uh, I'm Laura, as she said, I'm from Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, I currently work as a just analyst developer for a social enterprise called Sanergy, which is in the sanitation sector, but this is what I did for my undergraduate research earlier this year. Yeah, uh, yeah so maybe just some context on why do a project uh, uh, that is focused on roads. In some countries, especially in Africa, like in Kenya, roads are the main, fo main form of transport from a town to a town, a city to a city, and even for some regions like Eastern Africa from country to country. So basically roads affect um, all the activities that one gets to do from morning to evening, night to morning, yeah. So um, as I've said, like it affects like very simple activities like going to work or a shop or very urgent and complex ones like firefighters and or an ER team getting to an accident or an incident. Um, however, um, just like any other infrastructure, roads deteriorate with time and therefore there's a need for management. And road management sort of includes both the development of new roads and the maintenance of existing roads, where the development means basically increasing the network, because also for most developing countries, not all areas are covered by this road network, if we are to say tarmac roads. And also the maintenance of the roads that, have, that are existing so that they can be usable for a much longer period. Um, and so basically also what, when you go to a developing country or a third world country, what you'll notice is a lot of funds are focused on creating new roads and roads are entirely not maintained at all, meaning you're creating a new road and I can walk a few meters away and find a road that's full of potholes and cracks and not usable. So basically the idea was to create a very simple web interface that will aid the concerned road agencies in Kenya to be able to make data informed decisions as road maintenance is concerned. And by creating this interface or dashboard, you'll be able to provide evidence on how public funds are managed. And if you're not aware, Kenya is one of the countries where um, employees uh, actually like give the most, one of the most highest amount of taxes around the world. So, and most of these funds are usually misused. So this interface would provide um, a way to show how funds are used and sort of reduce corruption and improve all other sectors that uh, are affected by road transport and reduce other road-related road accidents that claim hundreds of lives per year. So, um, Basically, yeah, to create the interface, it's as simple and as common as it is. You'll need a web server and you use ZAMP since it's still locally hosted and the product is in development. Then a map server used GeoServer, then a GeoDatabase used Postgres, and then for data preparation used QGIS and Mapbox Studio for the web maps on the application. And then just uh, for the front end, we used React.js, just because at that time everyone was using React and Leaflet and Python for the back end. Yeah, and this is sort of the system architecture of how the whole uh, application works. So yeah, uh, just getting back to like what was mentioned yesterday in the keynote was uh, you might have software, you might have the skills, but if you do not have the data, then the software is sort of useless. And that is what, that was actually the main challenge when coming up with this solution, is that um, roads were being maintained in, in a sort of haphazard way. Like there was no means that they'd say they're selecting a road just because they didn't have data. And the data that was available had been collected decades back using an inertial navigation system 
that was like uh, put in a vehicle and then the vehicle is supposed to go through all the roads and calculate um, like the acceleration and how it moves so that if it moves down then they can say it's a pothole or it's a crack or something. But then that was just too expensive to collect data and you're not even thinking about the maintenance and all that, yeah. So they sort of stopped doing it, they did it once, and then uh, the government also explored other options like using LIDAR data and UAVs, which they also claimed to be too expensive for just data collection. So for us to have developed a solution that will then be actually used by these agencies, we needed to look for open data sources and crowdsourcing options that will actually be low cost or no cost at all. That's uh, when now we got to use OpenStreetMap data uh, and transit data that had been collected by an organization called Digital Matatus in Kenya. Then also the recently released Uber Movement data last year and also this year when Nairobi was also included. And then Twitter data. And then now data that was provided by the government was on maintenance history and drainage data. So um, maybe just a few things was that OSM was the best data and then maintenance history was basically data on which roads have been maintained in a year and which roads have basically not been maintained since they were constructed. And then transit data basically showed um, the relationships between our users and roads and how they use data, uh, roads on a daily basis. And then Uber Movement data also had data on traffic and speed and all that, yeah. And then for Twitter data, now that's where the crowdsourcing came in. So basically, um, Kenyans are active on Twitter and we noticed that on a daily basis from morning, as early as 6 a.m., people are tweeting about road conditions, if it's an accident, if there's traffic, if there's a pothole, if there's something something on the road that happened to them. So basically we used a Twippy API, which basically fetches data from Twitter that has been sent with the location component before Twitter disabled it. Yeah, so basically we got uh, a tweet, um, all the information, whether it's the name of the road and actually the GPS coordinates, if that person shared those, those coordinates. And then now using the software and the data, then uh, developed the, the, inter the web interface. So basically it's, it was just a map with the roads and an analysis of all the data sets combined to like provide um, roads graded from A to E, where E was like the best condition and E was the worst condition. And then uh, since most of these road agencies, the people who are working there are not GIS experts, we also provided a table view just in case someone might have issues or might just want to know the specific roads then assign the funds. So we also provided a table view. So um, also another fact uh, about Kenya is that we have a devolved government. So we have 47 counties which manage funds per county. It's not centralized uh, that the government at the top decides everything for the entire nation. So yeah, so we also provided the county level so that um, if the road agency in a specific county can just see what he needs, say for Nairobi County alone and also the specific con constituency. So yeah, so that was it. Um, and then now also one last functionality on this interface was also to uh, pro show if say they chose to to uh, to maintain a road, say this road section here E, it would show an alternative route which is the blue highlighted route on the end. So if the road is closed for maintenance, then it means uh, transport for people and goods won't be distracted, meaning they can still use alternative routes to move from one point to another. Yeah, and then now the last dashboard was uh, with, uh, just an interface to show um, 
tweets as they come in. So basically, it would show um, the total number of reported accidents and the location of the tweets as they were being sent. So uh, we were tracking for accidents, for road closures, uh, maybe for issues that are not pertaining maintenance by these agencies. So maybe if there's a road closure because of something else. Yeah, and potholes that have been reported also through Twitter. So uh, those streets are just streets that are using, we used for the pilot. Uh, and then now uh, what we are currently working on is creating an anal analysis dashboard where they can basically upload, um, say, a file of the roads, if it's a JSON or a shape file or anything, and then they can uh, indicate the maximum amount of roughness index because that's what they use to measure uh, the condition of a road and then it would show them a list of of the roads that are like in the worst condition. And then since Twitter also disabled the geolocation component, for now you can't uh, share exact GPS co coordinates for a tweet unless you geotag and as we had seen, most of the people who tweeted incidences were not attaching images. So also looking into natural language processing for Twitter feed to see if we can also be able to uh, actually convert text to location. And then we're also exploring street level imagery through ma mapillary. Yeah, um, and that's it. Thanks, Laura. Do you? Uh, does anybody have a question? Hello. Thanks. If you implemented a linear reference on your old network, was it successful with open source tools? Um, yes, I think as you had seen, uh, only one section that is missing is for the first interface over there, it was like on the back end, there's an actual analysis that was being carried out for you to get uh, this grading from A to E and all the tools that are used were open source. Yeah. So all the processing was being done on the, on the server side. We have another question. Uh, you talked about the road agencies in each of the districts or counties, as you call them in Kenya. Um, are the the agencies committing data to OpenStreetMap? Are they on board, or or is it still disparate um, in terms of so that you can actually get a a, a, a national data set for Kenya that is actually up to date, particularly for rural rural roads? Um, so no, <laughs> yeah, uh, as it would have been expected. Um, uh, so basically for OpenStreetMap, it's the local community that actually does a lot of work and then we reach out to other organizations that have data on transport and then we sort of get to integrate the best data and and what you get from these organizations. But actually, for, but for the first base of the road transport that was ever put on OpenStreetMap, uh, they gave it to us. But then for the updates, no. <laughs> yeah. Any more questions? So my question is maybe because now everyone has a mobile. Yeah, but <laughs> okay. Uh, so the question, uh, maybe some suggestion, because nowadays almost everyone has a smartphone and you develop already applications, so maybe, and these smartphones, most of them, they have accelerometers, so uh, maybe you can integrate these features that when person uh, goes on the car, uh, that accelerometer automatically detects uh, some shakes uh, higher, for example, than some magnitude, and you already automatically will know that it's a pit hole there, like a hole in the road, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um that is actually one, a solution that we had explored to integrate, but we were not looking to have the users to have to install, say, something else. 
uh, but actually use what they are currently using something like Twitter on a daily basis to to it normally. Because for that, we'll, I think we'll have to make them install something or that would send out that information to our end. So we are trying not to change the user behavior <laughs> and just use what they are currently using. It will require some more permission uh, for uh, from the user to accept, uh, for example, uh, that application needs access to uh, some uh, more data from mobile phone, but I don't know if uh, uh, from the point of view of Kenyan legislation it will somehow be... Uh, yeah, you need to think how to basically possible to anonymize this data because I understand it's uh, some issue from point of view of personal data if someone tracks where you go, but somehow I think it's possible to uh, think about some uh, anonymizing algorithms uh, for this. Okay. Thanks. Any more questions? Okay, let's give an applause to Laura.